Long Box Review, Episode 9. Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com, and uh, with me today is my co-host Travis. Yes, I'm Travis, and um, I run the comic blog Oddfellows Thoughts at oddfellowsthoughts.wordpress.com. All right, so Travis and I are here to talk about the end of Flashpoint and the beginning of the new DCU with Justice League number one. Yeah. Travis, what do you think about uh, Flashpoint number five? And and I guess um, Flashpoint, the, the, the main series overall. Um, I, I'm back to not being so keen on event books. <laughs> I was kind of excited about it. Like, I don't do event books. I, as, a, as a general rule, I, I don't like them. They irritate me because they mess with all of my other comics. But that's another conversation. Um but I, I was kind of getting into this, the Flashpoint, the, the, you know, some of the tie-ins and whatnot. It was all kind of fun. I don't know. The way this ended, I don't know. Well, this is a really, this is a really interesting event for comics in general because, I mean, it wasn't just like the, 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 the normal DC summer event right. that we usually get. Right. It it became you know as as time went on of course we found out oh well flash this it, event book it literally flash is point, changing everything permanently it changes right. everything about uh, DC comics yep. and so so I was what I was doing uh, reading through number five I read I reread it last night mm-hmm. and I've kind of flipped through it while we were uh, talking before we started recording All right and you know I I started looking at it it's, it's like it's like the Janus head right there's two there's two faces to this book to me there's there's you know just just looking at it and from the point of view of this is the event book you know how what kind of a story did it tell was it successful and of course the other side is this is the event book that led into the new dcu right how successful did it do that Uh uh-huh so i kind of wanted to talk about it in those terms if 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 sure sure so let's let's tackle the the first one um just in general the the event itself Okay. So when I when you know when they first announced Flashpoint, and this is on the heels of, um, and I'm probably getting the time frame all messed up because I'm not good with that, uh, but without having the information in front of me. But it was kind of like uh, Blackest Night occurred, and then they started talking about Flashpoint. And I was not all that keen about it. One because it it focused on the Flash, which is a character I'd never really cared about, especially the Barry yeah. Allen version. Um, and so they bring back Barry Allen, you know, that through the whole Flash rebirth, and then they have his own series, and then the Flashpoint gets gets going, and it's, it has to do with Flash. I'm like, eh. Um, but you know, it's an event, and, and it was only five issues, so I thought, what the hell? I'll, I'll try it out and see where it goes. And then we found out, of course, that Flashpoint was going to lead into some, the, the new DCU. So, um, but going into it, I can't like like you like you said earlier. Uh, I really enjoyed the first couple issues, especially, and it was right. kind of fun. The whole, the, all the tie-ins that they had, you know, the, the alternate realities and how people were different. And all, you know, that, that's all kind of fun in a kind of a general way. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, as I kept getting into, you know, because the, the tie-ins were three issues, right? And they all pretty, they all ended before Flashpoint Five came out. Um, and I got to the third issue of all the tie-ins that I got, and I didn't get all of them, but I got the majority of them. And I got to that third issue. I'm like, what? What was the point of that? Right, of all of them. Yeah. Well, except right? I would say, except for maybe the Batman one, the Night of Vengeance. That at least yeah. had a whole story to it, a beginning, right. a middle, and an end. Right. And the rest of them were like, oh, here's some interesting stuff about how these people are different in this universe. Uh, go read Flashpoint Five. Yeah. That was pretty much it. I mean, we, this, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. You know, but I think it's a difference in how they wrote this event in comparison to how they wrote prior events they changed the way they did the event it's only five issues long instead of being a year or a year and a half or 52 weeks worth of stuff how did they accomplish that 
they accomplished that by not putting all of that stuff in the main title, but instead having all these other miniseries. So they took the same amount of information that would be in a year-long event and squashed it into five or six months by by taking all by gutting by gutting the main story down to its core and putting all of the extras in these other books. Yeah, so but don't you, you think? To to a certain degree, I suppose. But but even you know, looking back at Blackest Night, which was I think seven issues. Well, I thought it was nine. But whatever, I didn't get it, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was it was, it was more than five. Um, it was not. And then they did they did a bunch of three issue tie-ins as well as the one shots they did. So kind of the same model that they did with this one, only you know the issues issue numbers may be different. Um, yeah. But at least at least with the the Blackest Night tie-ins that I got, and again I didn't get all of them, but I got a lot of them. There at least seemed to be a sense of. Here's the start of a story. Here's the middle. Here's the third issue, the the end of the story, and you got an arc within that three issues. Yeah. Uh, to me, anyway. But then reading this stuff with Flashpoint, it wasn't like that at all. Just kind of like, here's a bunch of information in three issues. Now go read the the main book. Right. And that I did not like. I did not. I don't like that style of storytelling. Yeah. And that 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 problem that I see is what I think of as. Um, or, or contributes to why people don't like event books. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, definitely. And I mean, I, my biggest issue, my biggest issue with the event book is because, you know, if I'm re- if I'm not interested in the event itself, how often, of course, it gets tied into all the other, you know, on regular ongoings, the regular ongoings, whatever arcs they had going on, or whatever plot lines get get pushed to the side so they can execute whatever um, the editorial mandate is to p- to pimp whatever the, um, you know, whatever the event book is. Mm-hmm. But, but even looking at this one, you know, trying to put it all together and whatnot, I mean, that's like I said, for me, it feels like that all of the other stuff, and I've been tickled by the, by the, um, the other, the tie-ins to this. Mm-hmm. There's been lots of little fun things that I found fun about it. But you're right, it gets to the final issue, and I look at it, and I look at it as a story, and didn't really tell me a story, you know, only kind of part way. It didn't fully execute it. Right. You know, it, and then that made it feel like it needed to somehow have been squished in t- with the rest of, it needed to all be together instead of being separate. Mm-hmm. And um, Exactly. That's that's exactly why I think the Batman tie-in is so successful because it barely, I mean, it, it's within the universe of Flashpoint. Well, it's the universe, that's it. But, other than that, but it doesn't really tie into it other than at the it, end where... where uh, oh. Wayne is is talking to. Um, then they can fix it. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Re- references the the larger story, but it doesn't right. it doesn't directly come into uh, yeah. the Batman tie-in. So yeah, that was an awesome story. You, you know, other than other than that last bit there of of hey, there's this guy that can fix it all. You know, there, there's there's a place where where Bruce is still alive. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That that if that if you weren't reading this other stuff, that might not make sense. But otherwise, that story in and of itself was a great tale. Yeah, it, it stands. You could take the flashpoint thing off of it pretty much, and it would stand as a good, entertaining alternate "What If" Batman. Yeah, story. I was thinking it, it, they they could have packaged the you know ten years ago they could have packaged this as an Elseworlds uh, oh, yeah. one shot, and we would very have loved easily. It. What? And we would have loved it. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I did anyway. I, that was great. For a second there, I thought you said I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> oh, no, hell no, I wouldn't have bought it. No, no, that would have been cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. no, it was it was cool. Um, <clears throat> here's my problem with Flashpoint, and partially my own mis- misguidedness in, in getting it in the first place. Okay, I know it says Flash in, in the cover, and I knew that somehow it had something to do with Flash. Um, I'm not a Flash fan. It doesn't matter who's inside the red suit. He doesn't really interest me a whole lot as a character. I mean, he's fine being part of the group, but I would never pick up a um, uh, like a Flash, you know, title by itself. I just have, I just don't, don't care, don't have any interest. Um, but, and I didn't mind the Flashpoint main title being somewhat. Um, Flashpoint, Flash-centric, 
but I didn't realize it was going to be this much flat centric. And it really brings it home in issue number five, just how much it's, it's a flash title, isn't it? Yeah. They quit writing flash so they could write this. I mean, it might as well have just been the flash title. Yeah. Except they wanted everybody to buy it because of course it was what was going to change the DC universe. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is just a flash story, isn't it? Very much so. But then again, Blackest Night was in many ways just a Green Lantern story. But, hey, and that's why I didn't get Blackest Night. But it was more successful, I think, in that it did – and I'm not sure in what well, ways. Well, I think because – I think – well, it was more successful also because um, Green Lantern was more successful at the time. Hadn't he put a lot more work into Green Lantern than he put into Flash? Well, yeah, before? that's true. That, that's true. But but I think I think the way that the story was told is, is really the, the – the, the success marker for Blackest Night, as opposed to Flashpoint. This whole thing felt felt rushed as hell to me, too. The way this ended, number five, the way it ended, it just like, <laughs> oh, God, hurry, let's finish. Well, okay, it's so... Like, it's like, hurry, we need to finish, and then, oh, crap, it's we're only ten pages in. Let's put a bunch of other dumb stuff in here to fill it out for the amount of pages we need. I, I would not be as probably as harsh as that, but I, I understand your... Your point of view on that? <laughs> you know, I mean, for me, you know, well, you know, we look at the, you know, you get the fight right at the very beginning between Flash and Reverse Flash, you know, where he basically tells him that, well, that he's the screw up, <laughs> that yeah. he's the one that's, that made the mess of everything. And, and I and I suppose that um, that the the bit we get, I don't know how many pages in it is, but basically it screws like, the entire world up. Like, yeah, when when. Reverse Flash tells him why we got the Flash yeah. universe. I assume that happened in, in right. the Flash title that I did not read. Right, I would guess so. I would guess so also. Um, except he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember going back and saving mom, right? No, he didn't. Until, like, until, until, until that, yeah. So maybe, or maybe it was something that happened. It's fine. I don't know. It seemed like it went on for an awful long time for him just to explain the fact that now he's not part. He's not really part of the timeline anymore therefore he doesn't need the flash anymore which i guess is kind of a scary thought you know i mean that's been one of the his achilles heels right is the fact is is that he really can't mess with the flash because if the flash isn't around then he can't be around see right? now that that was that was the focus of the story in the reverse flash one shot tie in oh, to this and i didn't yeah and i didn't uh, oh you didn't get I that one yeah it was out. just it was just uh it seemed like when i read it it seemed like it was just kind of a a cap issue to kind of uh -huh. round out the 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 flash story the the the, the flash title story that was going uh -huh. on and like i said uh -huh. i did not read it but i got that sense and he talks about that cuz he he tries in that one shot if i remember correctly he tries to go back in time and basically prevent Barry from ever becoming the flash or even right. outright killing him but he realizes at at one point that um he can't because if he does he doesn't exist right Right, but then we get this little bit where where you know Barry goes back in time to prevent her his mother's death, and that's what causes uh, uh, oh. Reverse Flash to get unstuck, right from that timeline or or, or however you want to put it. But so that was that was interesting plot detail to move the story yeah. forward, and you know it's actually not the Reverse Flash as we've been told by Barry in the last four issues. But uh -huh. actually, Barry himself that causes this, and I kind of like that that metaphor that um, that Zoom talks about. The gosh, where is it? Uh, I think it's later than where we're at in the book right now. But uh, like like a bullet through glass, I think is what he said, mm -hmm. or somebody said that. Gosh, I, I'm getting it all confused now. Yeah, I don't, I don't but, remember that. But but Sorry. I like I kind of like that explanation. Oh yeah, no, it's right there. It's at the bottom of the page. Duh. Um, yeah, you were like a bullet through a windshield. You shattered history. Uh, you changed time like an amateur. This is your fault, Barry. This hell is your creation. You traded the life of your mother for the rest of the world. And and that line right there, that's where it's like, yeah, that's that's really the interesting story right here. Right, right. But and okay, we, so that's where you get into the the uh, where, where I will agree with you about the story being rushed, because you mm -hmm. get this really interesting plot point and character Shouldn't moment, that, and right. they just breeze right by it. <laughs> that should have been more of the comic. I, I agree. And yeah. instead we get 
like I thought, we had the, the first two issues of Flashpoint, I thought were pretty good, setting up this, this, this world, and I was excited for what was coming. And then three and four, I was like, what, where are we going with this? Why, why are we wasting time with these plot details and stuff? And, and then we get to the, the issue five, and oh, wait, here's the big reveal, and this is what happens, and everything goes back to a certain state. Right. So, okay, I guess I guess I agree with you on some level that yeah, this was rushed in a way. Mhm. Uh, well, they missed the interesting stuff for me anyway. They missed yeah. that the, they just they pushed past it. Yeah, I, again, I think we talked about this uh, the last episode too and, and on some, some of the other end issues where it was more like it was more of a, a plot over character. Right. And and you know, if you don't have the character there, the plot doesn't matter all that much. And it really that really surprises me because Jeff Johns is is really known for his his character writing. But mm-hmm. because this you know they had to get this done in a certain amount of time right. to get to the to get to September and the New Fifty Two, you know I think they I think they just they tried to put everything in this past, box. They already moved past this. I think before this was in the can, they had already moved past it. Do you know what I mean? They were already on to the next stuff. They were already working on the next things, I think. Oh, sure. Because they knew they had to hurry up and get on with the next things? I don't know. Uh, that's my excuse as to why it is the way it is. Well, I, I think, I think, like I said, they, they only had a certain amount of time to, you know, they had five months. And I don't Do you remember, was any of the Flashpoint issues late? Coming no, I don't out? think so. I don't think so don't either. Think so, so. so basically we had five months uh, to tell the no, story. No, I don't. Yeah, nothing was late. Nothing was late, and they actually pushed up the date of um, Justice League. Right, right. Because this was supposed to be the only That's thing right. released that last week of August, I and then they about pushed that. up. And then they pushed up when people start getting, you know, their panties in a bunch over the whole new DC relaunch. Then they announced that they were going to do the Justice League would come out the same week. So mm-hmm. the two comics that would come out would be, you know, Flashpoint five and. Justice League number one. The end of the new beginning. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was it was not a very successful story to me because they they, they like I said they put it seemed to me they put plot over character and and a lot of it was a lot of the stuff that we see on the page seemed to be just kind of filler stuff yeah. that oh, yeah. they didn't contribute to anything other than here's a bunch of words and pictures on the page. Yep. And, and a lot of it's kind of act, anticlimactic, right? Because you get that bit where. Um, where the Reverse Flash is beating up on Batman and the Flash, and he's he's lecturing Barry as he's pummeling him, him, yes, and you know screaming out that the legendary Flash cannot hurt me, and then he gets shoved through, Ran through. Yeah. by by Thomas Wayne. Kind of like that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of funny. But then we, yeah. you know the rest of it's there's there's it's just a bunch of fight scenes. Going right. through here, and you got the Enchantress being the bad guy, but she's really not a bad. I mean, she is a bad guy. She's killing people, but well, she's not. She has no reason. There, there's right. no There's no motive for her to do it other than she's just having fun. Right. And Superman shows up. Well, unless you read the the what, Wonder Woman the Furies, one of the comics. No, no. Which one was it? Uh, uh, seven. Secret Seven. Is it the Secret Seven at the end of it? There, they basically tell her, "Hey, we'll fix so you never have to deal with June ever again if you, sure. That's you know, right. split personality." But right. anyway, but but certainly not in this. In this, it doesn't show that she's just out there throwing out green magic and whacking people, yeah. and having a good old time. And see, I, I thought, I thought that took away from the character because at least she had a motive in in the in the tie-in that was revealed. Right. Here, it was just like she's just crazy. Well, I, I yeah. don't I don't want to read about just crazy people doing crazy things just because they're well, crazy. I yeah, I don't mind that sometimes. But well, sometimes, sure. But, but I like it, the ending of her, though. <laughs> it, it's, where, it's such a Superman just kind of squashes her. It's such an anti-Superman kind of, moment. Why? Well, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's not Clark Kent. It's not Clark Kent. But, yeah. I don't know. I thought, God, maybe I liked it. Maybe I liked it for the same reason I liked it where when Batman runs through um, Reverse Flash because I'm, I'm tired of it. <laughs> And so, you know, he gets stabbed to the chest with a sword. Yay, that's over. Thank yeah. God. Yeah, now we can move okay, on. Okay, I'm tired of Enchantress just hosing people with their green magic. Scorp. Okay, yeah. yay, she's gone too. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know. Okay, so then, then we get to really what I thought was the, the crux of the story, where Barry has to decide. He has, he has to either save the world 
or save yeah. his mother, which that should have been the heart of the story pretty much all along, I think, or, yeah. or at least halfway through the flashpoint. I don't know either way. Um, but you know, because it's Barry and he's always the optimist and always trying to, you know, he's fast enough to do a lot of things. He thinks he can do both. Right. And so he had, he had this great moment between the two son and mother. And Was it great. Well, in terms of, at least it has some character here, you know, the mother uh, appealing to him and him trying to save her. And, and I, there's some pathos there, at least. Not much, yes. but there is some. For me, it just felt kind of like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I got to run. I got to run. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I'm not the only person in my household who felt that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the darker part of me, what I thought would have been a more interesting take on this, is that right. Barry actually had to kill his mother to to repair the damage not oh, not God, just that would have been not just prevent himself from saving his mother but actually having to do the deed oh that would have been brutal i know <laughs> they would never have done that never 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 no. but but to no. me, like i said the darker part of me is like that would have been cool that would have been I mean, interesting at least that wouldn't have happened because he couldn't have done that no no he could i mean because i mean just look at his face back when um when thomas runs through the guy that's basically yeah gonna kill him he's you killed him yeah, you know, so yeah no, there's no way very still the you know the altruistic uh almost polyganish yeah. character of the dceu yeah. but that's okay there needs to be characters like yeah. that but yeah yeah, I, yeah I, like i said for i don't know and okay so you you thought the whole conversation with mom was fine and you're right it wasn't bad but i'm already by the time i've read to here I'm already not liking the comic enough that I'm like <laughs> going, oh, come on, you know, just get it over with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at, at, at that point. It, it is. It, it, you're right. It, uh, on one level, uh, you know, it's it's three or four pages, three pages of kind of filler. You know, uh, appealing right. to his mom, telling him what telling her what's going on. And then and then he just goes and does it because it's the right thing right. to do. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I still like the moment. I, I'm a sucker for you know, parental um, mm -hmm. stuff in comics. There's not mm -hmm. enough of that, you know. When the, this, the, that's in fact that's one of my favorite. It's a slight digression. That's one of my very favorite things about the the Superman starting in in uh, eighty seven, eighty six, eighty seven when John Byrne came on. John Byrne, mm -hmm. and, Man of Steel. And, yeah. yeah, and brought back the Kents and that relationship right. that's lasted until now. Sure. Pretty much, yeah. That's one of my very favorite things about Superman, and my one of my very favorite things about comics in general was that relationship between the son and the parents. So, right. I, so I'm a, I'm kind of a sucker for that. Sure. So well, I, there's not I, enough. Yeah, yeah. So I liked it, and then okay. So now we get to the to the to the real meat, uh, or not really. Uh, I'll call it a bridge. So this mm -hmm. is where we get the DC that we know via Barry. And then within the Flashpoint universe, and then transitioning into the new DCU, because you got that two-page spread. After he, right. Barry stops his, himself from saving his mom, uh -huh. he's he's running, still running, and uh, he's trying to get back into the time stream. And then you get that, like I said, you get that two-page spread, and then you have all this stuff around him as he's running through, and then that hooded figure in the middle. Yeah, what the hell's with that? Okay, so what? Why do we have to have some omnipresent thing? Thank you. Because I don't know. I mean, I know you've been avoiding reviews and blah 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 about the new until you get to read it. This chick shows up in every single comic. I did see that on the article from Bleeding Cool. Yeah. Chick, I shouldn't call her chick. Sorry. Um, this lady. <laughs> why? Why do we have to do that? Uh huh. Yeah. Isn't that doesn't. Here we go again. Doesn't this muddy the waters? Doesn't this muddy the waters from a nice, clean start? I mean, this it seems random, to, yeah. hooded, hooded, haloed, nimbus figure uh, on, on a panel in every comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want an explanation for that. I, do you, so you, you prefer that they just, just got rid of that altogether? That Barry does this does this act prevents it 
uh, prevents Flashpoint from happening, but he does he, it doesn't quite get repaired, and we get the new DCU. That would have been if we take take this hooded figure out of the equation and this whole uh, this impending arrival of whoever they are, and the uh-huh. whole timeline being weakened thing. Uh-huh. Do you prefer that story? Um, I don't know if I prefer it, but if the message that I got from DC about why they were doing the relaunch, this seems counterproductive to that relaunch. Mm-hmm. This forces – if this hooded figure is in a, is going to be in the comics going forward, and it's going to have some effect on um, the new DC universe – it forces us to potentially, as new readers, have to go back and acknowledge the past that isn't supposed to matter for what I'm reading going forward. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah. So that's a that's a failure, I think, on their message of what they want going forward. This is my concern and suspicion. We, well, we can put this under a conspiracy theory um, thing. <laughs> We plant this lady in the new universe, and if we don't like how something's going, maybe she has the ability to tweak it back to the way it was. So she's the back door. Yes. That they, that DC has said that they don't have. I, I wonder. I hope not, but I wonder. Well, at the very least, she she's she's the conduit by which DC sets up their next big event. Not not coming in the next year, if if you believe what what Dan DiDio has been saying, but uh-huh. the following year. Right. But yeah, I don't know. You have you have a you have a point there. It, that, 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 it, it, that bothers me. Because it, that that bothers me. If if I mean, if, I, if the if the timelines were shattered, as she says, into three long ago, splintered to weaken uh, their world. Um. That it can happen again. Yeah. Despite the fact that she says uh, uh, the timelines must become one now, you can help me fix that, Barry Allen, but at a cost. So is is the cost is the cost that the timeline isn't exactly what he had before, and now it's a mash of these three. I, I, that's is how that I read. Cost? It. Yeah, that's how I read it. Or 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 is that foreboding that something else says that, that at a cost? And I'm thinking, oh man, what's the cost? I get to the end, and I'm thinking, okay, so the cost is it's not exactly his reality anymore? Well, that, that, That's the cost, or is this some hollenbringer of what's coming up outside of the, you know, the fact we're just doing this relaunch? I don't know. Well, maybe at, I, at the very maybe least. Maybe I read too much into it. I don't. No, I don't think so. I, th- I think you have a good point there. But, but as far as the cost to bury – Personally, uh, part of that is, of course, that he and Iris are not together any longer. Oh yeah, I know. The new the married thing. Can't write. Can't write an interesting story with married people. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> because once you get married, it's very boring for you. Yeah. There's no complications in your life once you're married. <laughs> well, the other thing that bothers me about this panel is, is this person. I mean, I'm unless I missed them and I haven't gone back and looked at the last four issues of Flashpoint. Or any of the other um, tie-ins, this figure, this hooded figure, is not anywhere else in the book, right? I don't believe so. So for one time. splash page, this entity comes on, you know, this talking head comes on, says, you know, five or six lines, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. What? I I don't know that. Is that a good story? Is that good storytelling? No. I mean, it'd be okay if if I, I would accept it more. And be, actually, I wouldn't. If it looked like the traditional figure of God and delivered those lines, it would. It, it might be easier to swallow than I don't know what this is. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, or see, I it, it is God. Exactly, because how did you know how, when Barry Allen first came back? He, you know, there was a, there was a big bolt of lightning. Uh, you know, this is what a year ago, or more, probably, probably closer to two years ago now. Um, this big bolt of lightning comes out of the sky, and he's just back. He doesn't know why he's back, what brought him back, and, and, and all this stuff. 
they they could have and maybe maybe it is maybe this maybe this hooded figure does have something to do with it but it was never explicitly stated um at least in this story here right uh but yeah. that would have been an interesting way to tie it all back to why they brought Barry Allen back but we don't get that here so yeah in 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 that sense um this i think is a, this is a failed part of the story and and, and it lessens the, the the entire story itself yeah I, I, you know, now that you mentioned, I'm, I, I need to go back and look at all the previous four issues just, just to see if there's any, if this Same character here. is in the background somewhere, right. because that would make it at least, you know, somewhat more acceptable. Well, yeah, we just missed the fact that there was this person in the foreground, what kind of watching what was going on, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But, Waiting for this moment to happen so they could go, okay, you need to fix all this stuff. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's a bit. Uh, a bit, uh, you know, God of, God of, what do they call it? The God in the machine type yep, okay. thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so we get he he's running through there and his costume's changing. And so you, yeah. again, he he's now he has wearing the the flash suit of the new DCU. But but mm-hmm. I, but I want to I want to just briefly touch on this. So the, she talks about the hooded figure talks about the the. the the history of the heroes was shattered into three long ago. And mm-hmm. that's on the left page. And then you get at the bottom left there, there's the DCU that we know. And then you get up, up, up at the top left, uh, looks like um, the Vertigo universe. Cause you got animal man and swamp thing well, and constant and shade changing. Yeah. Yeah. Shade. And who is the, I don't know. I don't recognize the girl. That- might be Madam Xanadu. Xanadu, okay, that that makes sense. Could be. Uh, and then, of course, the next to that is the Wildstorm universe. So, you know, right. it's, it gets kind of a bit, a, a little bit meta in that, you know, you have the three imprints of DC Comics, sure, <laughs> going on here, and that's supposedly the timelines. Um, but so the, there's those three, and then they get they get transformed into one, which is the new one. And then you, on right. The, the right side of that splash page is. is yep. The main heroes, and then up, and then some of the secondary heroes up above. So, so we get that, and then you know, <clears throat> excuse me, Barry wakes up, and everything's back to normal. And I put that in in quotes, the new normal, the new, the new DCU. Yep. And he goes to deliver the letter from Thomas Wayne to Bruce. Well, yeah, and just to check out to make sure that it really is Bruce now and not right. Thomas Wayne. <laughs> So what did you uh, – so, okay, so, you know, the Flashpoint universe is over. We're now into the new DCU. Woo-hoo! <laughs> and, and, I, and I did like how, you know, uh, at the beginning of Flashpoint, you know, Flash goes to Batman because Batman's the guy to go to when you need to figure well, something out like this. And sure, he that's a mystery. That's who you go to. That's right. It's, it's Thomas Wayne, though, in the Flashpoint universe. And then at the mm-hmm. end of the book, you know, the bookend is that he goes to Batman again, only now it's the Batman that we all know. Uh, well, it's Bruce Wayne anyway. I won't say that we know him because everything he's, is up for grabs. He's now. younger and been a lot busier. And yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Um, so I, I, I like that from a, sto- a storytelling standpoint sure, that, that sure. you know you had the two bookends, Flash and Batman, right. Flash and Batman. And it makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. So, but what did you think of? Um, th- there's some stuff that I've listened to in other podcasts and things I've read a little bit about this scene where. Barry gives him a letter and Bruce's reaction to it. Uh huh. What did you think about that? I actually liked it. I did. I liked it. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I go. I go back and forth on it. I mean, I, it was weird. It almost. I mean, you know, I look at it now, and it to some degree, it almost feels like the panels are somewhat out of order. I don't. I don't understand his reaction. You know. He you mean gives what? it to him. Yeah. He stands up. He, I don't know, it looks like he, he is almost like he's going to collapse or something. Yeah. Then he sits down in the chair, you know, and it obviously looks like he reads it over two or three times. Yes. While he's sitting there. Spruce become a softy. <laughs> See, that's why I brought I mean, that up. Not, not that I, not that I, not, I mean, not that I don't think that, that there, you know, we shouldn't see Bruce Wayne cry. Or that sort of thing, you know. I don't right. think that's that's not what I'm saying. It's just the fact is, is that he's just going to accept this. <laughs> that's my bug problem with the whole thing from the very beginning. So he shows up and he basically says, "Oh yeah, I, you know, I, I dicked with the timeline, you know, everything seems normal and okay." 
And Bruce just goes, "Oh well, yeah, yeah, I would have tried doing that too if I could have." Well, I thought that really? was a good. I thought that was a good thing, though. Uh, not not well, that he just accepts him saying if I had the power, I'd try to change it. Hell, we all know that he would yeah. try to change it. But Bruce is extremely judgmental. Extremely oh. judgmental. Hold on, hold on. This is the new Batman. You don't know how judgmental he is. Oh, he kiss my what? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So you're right. That's going to be a fundamental change in Batman. If suddenly Batman is, you know, three degrees more Clark Kent than what um, he is <laughs> in my world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to have a hard time writing dark, grim, and gritty books, which it looks like all of the Batman titles are going to be, from what I can tell. Yeah. I haven't read them yet, but just looking at what's there, if he's going to be, you know, a Boy Scout. Well, I, I, that's my issue. My issue is I can't I can't see Bruce taking this at face value. Oh, OK. I mean, I know he knows Barry's got lots of history with Barry, but but Batman doesn't take anything at face value, even from the people that are supposedly his best friends. Right. Well, but you're again, right. This again, the new universe, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. OK, so yeah. pretty much. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it made perfect sense to me. It was all in character and. I mean, I don't know. I mean, is that what this is supposed to be telling us, that this is the new Batman and this is how the new Batman is? See, I think so. I, I, I really think that's 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 why so, we get two pages of this and we get so, a, a crying Batman. Yeah. So who made this decision that this is how he was going to be? Who do you think made that decision? You... I mean, really, this is this is setting the tone for, for Batman. You're, you're telling me that you think these pages – set the tone for Batman, how Batman's going to be in the future well, I think, for new DCU. I think it sets up the opportunity for Batman not to be so antisocial. And as you said earlier, judgmental, not that he can't be like that to a certain degree, but I think this is, is showing a uh, somewhat softer side so that he can interact, you know, play with others better, so to speak. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I, I hope not. Well, I mean, I, it'll be. It seems... I see tweaking characters. I see tweaking characters. Obviously, you know, to to give them more room to do some other stuff with or fix things that they didn't like about the characters, you know, past or you know, attitudes to some degree. But if you fundamentally change any of these characters, how is it going to be accepted? Well, now hold on. When uh, you say fundamentally change, though, look at the Batman from the 1960s. You know, he was parading, parading, uh, parading around in the daylight, smiling at everyone, going sure. off on science fiction adventures. And it was only, sure. you know, in the, the, the mid to late 70s where we get uh, the, the, the grimmer and grittier Batman. Yeah, only 30 years plus of the grimmer and grittier Batman. Yeah. That doesn't mean that that isn't established. No, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not established. I'm just saying that over time, that this character has changed sig uh, significantly. Well, well, sure he has. Well, he changed before the new DCU. He changed. Yeah, that, that's right. They did make him. You know, when he came back from being dead, he changed. Yeah. yeah. He changed. Okay, he so yeah, still, I guess we really don't need this. He was still a badass. Right? He was still a badass, but he cares about the people that are around him. Mm -hmm. Or maybe okay, so maybe I we're. I don't just... know that these last pages show that though. They don't show him as being a badass, but he still cares about the people around him. Yeah. It shows him as being, I don't know. Well, maybe we're just making too much of this. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's just maybe it's just a simple character moment where a a a um, orphaned son mm -hmm. has some a communication of a kind from his ersatz father. Sure, and that, that's what I took it as until you started telling me it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me worried. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Because that's what I took it at. I just took it as an extremely stretched out, touching moment. Uh, the fact is, is here's this guy who, you know, obviously still dearly misses his his parents. You know, it's a fundamental effect of why he is and how he acts the way he does and whatnot. And to get this letter from the past, you know, um, you know, because we're only given glimpses of what his relationship with his you know parents are and whatnot. And, you know, and to get this letter. That once again reaffirms that your father loves you is um, would be pretty awesome, um, and so 
I have no issue with him crying at the end and being affected by it. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, if I think about how Bruce is, he would be analyzing the bejesus out of this thing. Right. I, I, he wouldn't take it at face value because he doesn't take anything at face value. Sure, but but we I don't think that we could have I don't think they could have really fit this in and kept the the momentum of the story that sure. they had going. Well, they so, I, but I think you're right. I, 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 I when I first read this, I took it as as that as you know he he's just emotionally reacting to yeah. this letter from his father, and I kind of was a little bothered that he was crying openly in front of Barry because uh-huh. that seems. Right. You know, I know I keep saying, you know, this is the new Batman. We don't really know anything about what he's, he's like. He's way more guarded than that. But I would yeah. think he'd be more guarded even with Barry. Right. Um, uh, at, at, at best, he might he would he would break down in front of his own family, you know, yeah. the, the Robins and, and Alfred. But right. the, the rest of the Justice League, I, I, I kind of call that into question. But, you know, understanding the way that they wanted to end, or not understanding the way they wanted to They wanted, to wanted end, an emotional. But they wanted, yeah, they wanted an emotional yeah. ending to this. And and I think it works on that level, but yeah, sure. it does call into question, you know. So how, what is this Batman like? Why is he reacting this way? Why why didn't he do this and do that? I cannot accept that these two pages set the precedent for how Batman is. No, I, I agree. I, I I just thought it was an interesting idea. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so okay. Oh so, yes, you're right. It is an interesting idea, and I reject it. Thanks, <laughs> panel. All right, so uh, let's keep that in mind, uh, how this Batman is portrayed at the end of Flashpoint, okay. and then I want to compare it to what we're shown in Justice League number one. Yeah. Um, but same writer, yeah. So. yeah same, exactly, same writer, um, but although the character is five years younger than what we're shown in the end of Flashpoint. So right. uh, there's, there's obviously a progression uh, in the character and the relationships he has. So that'll be interesting to see, I think in justice league, see how that develops. Um, but before we move on to justice league, uh, just in, just in general, do you, do you think flash, the flashpoint series and flashpoint number five in particular, was it a successful say event book? If, if you take out the, the, the connection to the DC new. No. I don't know. I read the last issue and went, yeah, what? Whatever. I mean, not, not what is in, I'm confused, but what is in. What was the point? All that for, yeah. I it mean, was I don't flash know. Point. It, it, but it didn't fun. tell, it really didn't feel like it was a gripping story. I didn't yeah. feel gripped. I was, I was interested at the beginning, excited. You know, we got to the issue where I, I, I was tickled to death by the whole cyborg Batman and flash breaking into the, um, Superman project place and all that and Superman being there and him taking off and him going, Oh, uh, now what? I love that. <laughs> that was great. That was fun. That was interesting. Cause I, I didn't get the, um, I didn't get the project Superman thing. So I don't know, you know, I don't know any details around that, but I thought that, you know, all that kind of part of it was, was fun and interesting. You know, the, the, the kind of the idea of the fact that there's this war going on between the things to find out that the reason the war is going on, if you read some of the, other spinoffs is because basically there's some idiots amongst their ranks who just couldn't tolerate the fact that they had to be equals with the humans. And, and, and that part is interesting on, on face value. You know, all the ideas that were there, I think were really interesting and could have been really cool. And then we get to this, this final issue and it's just, I don't know for nothing. It's, it's flat and just kind of, I don't know. I went. I guess I wanted a different ending than what than what than what came out of it. Mm-hmm. So for me, so for me, no, it didn't. It didn't feel. It didn't feel successful as a event book on its own. Um, obviously, it's successful in setting up the new, the new universe because when the book's done, it's the new universe. Yeah. But that could have been done with a single line. You know, there was a boom, and this is what came afterwards. Yep. So. No, maybe if I'm a Flash fan, if I was a Flash fan, and I was reading the Flash. Maybe this was a successful book because it just tied into what I was reading and what I was interested in. Mm-hmm. But because I'm not a Flash fan, maybe that's why it just—I don't know. Yeah, it's—it's it's got me back off event books again. 
you know, whereas I started out really excited because it was all this fun stuff was going on and whatnot, but none of the fun stuff got ended inter- in an interesting way. Mm-hmm. Oh, it all blew up, right? I mean, isn't that what we got? I mean, they whack, they beat the crap out of Aquaman. He says he's through this, and pretty much he pushes the button and, what, it sinks the world or rips the world in half or something? Yeah, yeah it was supposed Don't to crack that- the world open. Right. Don't we get that impression that, that that's what's happening before he goes running off like a, you know, as fast as he can to try and yes, yes whatever he can? Mm-hmm. But even that didn't feel very satisfying. No. No, because like, a lot of things in here, I, no, they just threw what? out there and then and then didn't touch back on them again. I would have liked better if they would have blown, if the world would have split in half somehow. He goes running off and he wakes up and then and not had the whole chase himself down and and the mom thing and hmm. Bruce thing and whatnot. I might have swallowed the whole pill better if it was just that way. I don't know. I mean, I probably would have felt cheated then too. But. Well, or or at least maybe take it, just take out the hooded figure bit, that 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 splash page, yeah. that explanation, yes. that that reason for the new universe to exist. There doesn't need to be a reason. Yeah. Well, not not in the comic. There doesn't need a reason. You, can't, you come out to their side, and obviously, it's not right. Yeah. So, no, for me, was it for you? Was it a successful no, event book? No, but but also I think that's that's kind of a, an unfair question because it was I don't think it was ever it was from DC's point of view it was never designed to be just just an event book it was supposed to be like I said earlier a bridge between mm-hmm. this uni- the universe that we're familiar with and this new one. Well, so, then then you re- then you really didn't need a lot of that stuff that was in there. I agree. They should have just done uh, I don't know like an Eddie Page special. And put through, put in the major things that you need to get the story across, and and then boom, you have Justice League number one. After that, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Then we would have only paid what five bucks instead of <laughs> what four twenty. Yeah, twenty bucks. <laughs> twenty bucks for Flashpoint. There, oh my God. There, there's your answer. Not counting, not counting all the the, <laughs> the tie-ins. tie-ins books. Well, at least those were. There's your reason why they didn't do it right there. Yeah. Wow, yeah, when you put it in that perspective, holy crap. Yep. Oh, well. But we did it, and <laughs> here we are talking about it now. That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the to the to what I think is the much better comic, Justice League number one, the, the, with the new 52 emblazoned on the front cover. Woo-hoo! And did you notice that the, the DC Comics logo is now gold and white? And I don't know if that's... On- I don't on know some of the thing. titles, is it okay? Yeah, I haven't checked, like. but at least on this, uh, one it is. I thought that right. Was my understanding is, is that each of the different, you know, because they have, you know, they, when they started introducing these, they introduced them kind of in categories. Oh, categories, yeah. The justice ones, the dark ones, the the justice. Each one of those, the logos, different colors. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. That's my understanding. Is way is that each one, each one has its own kind of, you know. Whatever to it, and I don't remember what the color combinations are, right offhand. But yeah, each one has its own different kind of color combination. Oh, I'm gonna have to go look that up then. I just I just picked up my my uh, previews catalog, but of course they don't have they don't show all the stuff on the cover. They're just showing the image. So and the couple number ones that I actually have in my possession now, I don't really have in front of me, so I couldn't tell you what color they what color they are. But. So which what do, what do you have? What number ones I, do you well, have? Well, well, besides the the Justice League, I um, Went to the store and bought um, uh, Static Shock and, oh, that's uh, right. and and Batwing. Those are the those are the two I bought that weren't part of my pull list. That after kind of seeing stuff coming up on it and whatnot, I decided I better actually at least get number one and check out and see what what they're like. So, but otherwise, I you know I'll wait for my actual comic order to be shipped mm-hmm. to me and be able to look at the rest of them. Yeah. So I think in a couple of weeks we'll, we'll be recording again to talk about those. What do you think? I think so. Okay. But first, let's talk about Justice League. Let's, please. <laughs> uh, so so uh, the first few pages we've already seen, if you've, if you've read any of the, um, the, the preview stuff that, that's been out for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, actually, yeah, that this, this, these first few pages were in that um, – Oh gosh, I don't have it in front of me either right now. It's the uh, the the free 
sampler, I guess, issue that they oh, put out right. the same week as Justice League number one, mm-hmm. um, the DC Comics, the new 52. And so, yeah, I think at the back of that they have – or no, maybe it's the front. Yeah, it's the front. It's the first – looks like uh, four, five, six pages of Justice League. So right. I've, already, I've already read that. Um, but but I but I liked it. But but uh, let's see. So the, the comic opens with with this with the, this text. There was a time when the world didn't call them its greatest superheroes. There was a time when the world didn't know what a superhero was. And there we have it. That's that's the new the new DCU setup. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, at any rate. Mm-hmm. Um. What so what do you think of this in general? Justice League number one with Jeff Johns oh. and Jim Lee. It looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like I like Jim Lee's art. You know, so far as that, it looks good. Um, you know, I was this the issue to sell everybody on to continue to buy the comic? Is this the issue that was going to get everybody excited about the new DC universe? I don't I don't know if it did that. If that's what it was supposed to do. Um, yeah, I had time just, with that question. Yeah, I didn't see anything in here that made me go, "Wow, this is the new DC universe. This is awesome!" Boy, I'm going to pick up all those other titles that come out next week and the week after that and the week after that and the week after that. <laughs> Saying, you know, I mean, because I, you know, because I read this comic and I've read it a couple times, you know, asking myself those questions as I'm reading it because, of course, me not just being a comic fan, well, I'm a comic fan, but I mean, beyond just a fan of this title. Um, you know, what is the, you know, asking the questions, what is the DC company doing, you know, to try and further comics and whatnot. And and so you've got these extra questions we can ask now, you know, is this doing all these things that they're hoping that it does, that it gets people excited about comics, that it makes us all this other stuff. I don't know that it did any of that um, in itself, just reading this. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if I read this and go, dang, I want to read, I read this and I know I want to read Batman or, or, Dang, I, you know, I want to read Superman. Um, I sure as heck know I don't want to read Green Lantern if Hal Jordan's in it. <laughs> then on Twitter, like yesterday or whatever, or a couple days ago, that I've never been a Hal Jordan fan, really. Mm-hmm. Eh, whatever. You know, I went and watched the Green Lantern movie, fine, whatever. But I've just never been a fan, that big of a fan of the character. I know as much about him as I do because I'm a huge Green Arrow fan, and Green Arrow for a lot of years got tied. The two of them were tied together. They were buddies and whatnot, and so that's why I know as much as I do about the guy. But, you know, excuse my French, but he's kind of a dick. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you be if uh, – so you're, you're a young guy and you've got this ring that can construct anything that you think of. Don't you think you'd be kind of a dick a little bit? I guess it depends on how long I've been, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know. You know, I guess, yeah. Um, my 13-year-old read this comic and went – Wow, they're a bunch of punks. <laughs> so, do we want to read about a bunch of punks? I don't know. So, everybody knows who these characters are. You know, we all know who Batman is. We all know who Superman is. We all know who Green Lantern is. Even if you don't know most superheroes, you know who he is because of the movie that was out. Even if you didn't watch the movie, you've at least seen the commercials for the movie, mm-hmm. so you have some idea. My parents even know who Green Lantern is. Um, because of the movie. Because well, because the movie they didn't watch the movie, but they've at least seen the commercials. Okay, yeah. So they know that he's he's. A, so if this is your first exposure to these people, it's not like you or me who know these characters and we're looking at them going, oh, this is when they were young and brash and whatnot. I mean, I know it says five years ago at the beginning, but if I'm going to have to read, I don't know how many issues until they get to the present time, and during that time they're going to be these kind of childish punks, as my son refers to them. Do we want to read that? Do well, we? But I, as a new reader, do you want to read that? I don't know. But this is just a first issue, and it is there. This is in the past. I don't, I don't know that I want to would 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 say that this is indicative of what the characters are. Once we get to the point where they've caught up in the timeline. But that's five issues from now, isn't it? Like five issues in this first arc. Sure, them but establishing. I, but I don't them think... establishing themselves as superheroes and why the world would want them as superheroes. Yeah. But I don't think that Lantern's going to be portrayed like this through, through that entire time. I think we're going to see some changes as we go on. 
Okay. But I'm just talking about this as a first issue to sure. a new reader. Sure. See, I, I, I liked it. I, 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 you know, I didn't mind that Lantern was kind of a dick because it makes sense to me that he would be, especially since this is the first well, time that they've met. Sure. And, you know, like I said, this guy, he thinks he can do anything. He's a, he's a Green Lantern. Yeah. And he, and he runs up against this guy who dresses up as a bat. Um, yeah, I'm going to, if I have that much power and I see this other guy that, you know, just dresses up and, and punches people, I'm going to be like, dude, let me handle this stuff. This is, this is my kind of stuff that I handle. So I guess I would be, I'd be a perfect Green Lantern. I'd be kind of a dick myself. So anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I like the interaction I mean, between the two. In short. I mean, well, yeah, I, I don't know. This does not make me... It, like I said, I'm not a Hal Jordan fan. This just confirms I'm not a Hal Jordan fan. That's all this. That's all that did for me. I mean, yeah, I like some of the dialogue and whatnot. It was amusing. I, do I think this is a bad comic? No, I didn't think it was a bad comic. Uh, I'm not riveted for the next issue, other than I'm kind of looking forward to seeing the Superman and Batman tangle mm -hmm. for the quote unquote first time. Mm -hmm. You know, so that'll be interesting because you know, obviously, even at this point, Batman's no fool. So. I mean, he's he's obviously pretty arrogant too. Yeah, but he but I mean, he's also there... he's also the prepared Batman that we've we've come to know in the past because he he already knows that Lantern's uh, place of operation is Coast City. He knows about Superman and, and Metropolis. So right, you know, I right. I think so. We were talking about how Batman the like the softer side of Batman shown in Flashpoint. We now get uh, five years earlier at least we get this Batman who. You know, he he's. I think he's more along the lines of the Batman that we that we know and are familiar oh, with. Oh yes. Um, yeah. And so he's going to be prepared to a certain degree, and you know, he's he's done his homework. He's the Batman. That's what he does. Right. And it, well, and it shows him as a younger Batman in the sense that, um, the Batman of as of a month ago would never even get into the the whole. Oh yeah, mine's bigger than yours is kind of argument. But he starts to get into <laughs> pal here, and that's really what it comes that's, down to. That's true. Yeah. And he wouldn't even waste his time with that. I mean, he knows he can kick Lantern's ass, and it's as simple as that. You know, he wouldn't get into a, you know, into this kind of where they're almost in it's a fight with each other, and it's basically over. Oh yeah, I'm better than you are. Yeah. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that now. So I mean, I like. I guess I, I like that in that sense. Is obviously he. Because he hasn't interacted with all these people again. I mean, he's supposedly basically been largely a myth up to this point, and so he hasn't interacted with uh, these people. So he's. I I really hate that whole urban myth angle. You know what? Yeah. I do. I I I can understand it. Like if he first started out, Batman first starts out. You know, in the first few months of his operation. Mm -hmm. Um, I I get that. You know that he's he's an unknown quantity. He you know people would question if he's actually real, but then. You know, at least in this this the very first page, you know, the Gotham PD, and we don't know how long he's been operating mm -hmm. at this point. You know, this is five years ago, but how long has Batman actually been operating as Batman? Right. Uh, but the Gotham PD, they sure know who he is. They refer to him as Batman. They recognize him. They they don't appear to be afraid of him, although they're they're armed to the. Uh, yeah, they're shooting anyone with gunships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, that whole idea of Batman as an urban myth just uh, has always bugged me, especially uh, when you consider if he's operating, you know, when now uh, when he will operate with the Justice League, you know, right. for them to if if they continue with that kind of idea, that just really bugs me. But anyway, that's that's an aside. Um, so I, I I can see your point about it. You know, was this a, uh, this a successful? introduction to the new universe does it make people excited to go buy the other books probably not so much but i am forgiving of it because i think this is a the start of a pretty good story and i'm just looking at it in terms of the characters that we're presented with um and but being all, also being a fan i i am excited to go actually go read some batman comics uh, and of course, I'm, I was going to get Green Lantern anyway because I do like Hal Jordan and I do like Green Lantern. So, but he's not in it, is he? <laughs> Isn't it like Sterno? Well, that's I'm I'm sorry, you're right. Um, it is Sinestro, Sinestro as, yeah. as uh, the main character of the Green Lantern book. But Hal's going to be in it, and eventually he'll he'll be back as Green Lantern because ah, okay. that's just how it's going to be. Can I say one more thing about one more hating thing about? Oh yeah, go ahead. 
Green Lantern because I love to hate on him. <laughs> I hate the constructs. I hate the fire trucks. I, I, this new kind of like the movie is. I mean, I don't know how, how long has he been like this. Because like I said, I don't read a lot of. How, how long has he been? I don't know producing fire trucks in this kind of detail and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, no, back when I back when I read it back in the you know seventies eighties and stuff when he was teamed up with Green Arrow, they were never this elaborate. That's true. And I liked it that way. I liked it where it was more quasi shapes, not this insanely detailed whatever. I can't stand him on the front cover with the chain gun, for instance. I, I don't know. That, that I did. that's just my aesthetics. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, I, I kind don't. of agree with you on that. I, 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 it makes it makes sense from a visual standpoint that they wouldn't want to do more of this kind of stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, you're right. Hal at least has never been. It was always it was always um, Kyle. Was was the the elaborate over the yeah top. the image guy because he was an artist right Hal isn't he you know he's he's a, he's a he's a jet uh, pilot right so I, I I understand that but but from from a visual standpoint I like it more just because it's different and and there's it's more interesting to a certain what degree. what do you think of what do you think of their um, hint as to who the first big villain's going to be oh dark side yeah I think that's great. I too. I, that's much better than than um, Starro or the you know the the, the secret origin of the JLA back right. in the sixties was you know yeah. those the, the 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 wood creature the the water creature I don't know what the right. the I can't remember the exact what the planet they were from mm-hmm. but yeah that that's how they got together yeah this is this is a much more appropriate oh yeah villain, why you gather together League. a bunch of yeah heck, heck yeah this is this I mean, is this is a, a good uh, or a, a genius. Uh, idea on on uh, Jeff John's part yeah. to to bring Darkseid in as the big bad to yeah. bring these guys together. I think that's awesome. I can't wait to and, see how this plays out. And I I know you're not a fan of the new Superman costume, is that right? <laughs> I wasn't. I'm I glad you brought that up. I love this last page. That last page sold he me on this suit. Kick ass in that costume. It does. The way that Jim Lee draws, and it's not just the suit either. It's it's yeah. his face. Oh, yeah. You know, and he has kind of the curly hair, but it's not the usual spit curl that we're so used to seeing. The, yeah, over the top. Yeah. And, and he doesn't look padded here. No. I mean, yeah, there are lines on the suit, you know. Uh, maybe the legs. It's, it's put together in some sense. But I like the fact he's not wearing literally completely skin type something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, who would be comfortable in that? <laughs> Unless you're a complete alien, which he's not. <laughs> yes, he's an alien, but he has spent some time. Yeah, but you he's know, vulnerable. It doesn't matter. He doesn't get. There's no chafing on an invulnerable guy. I understand that, <laughs> but, but he still grew up. He grew up from unless they really change his history. He grew up as a baby in human society. Yeah. Most people, not everyone, because there are people like Lady Gaga out there. Most people <laughs> would not be comfortable in a basically painted on suit. Yeah. You know, whipping around, whether they're invulnerable or not. I yeah, but. I I was kind of eh, one way or the other on the on the mm. on the costume, but yeah, he looks awesome. He does. He does. Like I said, that, it's like ooh yeah. Yeah. You know? the, the splash page sold me on the 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 way that the suit looks. It, uh, you know, the the whole idea of the the trunks, the red trunks being gone now, if yep. replaced by the red bell. And I, I thought that was a, just a silly decision, um, because it's obvious that he does have. You know, it looks like he still has trunks. They're just trunks. Sure. Um, so I thought, well, w- what's the point then? Why not just make him red? But I, I saw that picture and I thought, wow, that looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. The only thing I still don't like mm. are his cuffs, the way that they're pointed towards the front of his oh. hand. I just think yeah. that's silly. Just, right. just make him, just make him round. Don't, don't right. put the V shape in there. But yeah, I look at that picture. I'm like, I want to read this Superman. I can't wait to see this. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I'm not excited to read Superman, but, but certainly, um, <laughs> certainly he looks cool here. And I've never, it, you know, except for certain fight scenes, or whatever. I ne- generally never look at Superman and go, "Wow, he looks cool." Uh huh. But he does there. Yeah. Well, we'll wait till next issue when we get the, supposedly the fight between the two. Yeah. That should be. Well, yeah. Drawn by. Well, I'm, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm looking forward to the next issue. This issue didn't like super excite me, but you know, I'm. I'm looking forward to the next issue. So, but I'm also looking forward to them all getting together as an actual full team right. doing something. So we only this is what only four characters in here, mm-hmm. and Cyborg's not even Cyborg yet. Oh yeah, we I wanted to talk about that. Let, let's come back to that. But okay. so what did you think about that? The fact that we only get really three heroes interacting with each other out of the seven so far. 
does that have play into your in, uh, enjoyment of this issue, however you enjoyed it? Did, did you expect to see the whole Justice League at once, I guess is the question. Maybe not together, but yes, I did. Yeah. I, I expected to see, I expected to see all the people that were on the cover mm-hmm. somewhere in it. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, I mean, obviously maybe not interacting with each other at all, but that they're gathering. We're not even, we're not even in that. Now, do I dislike it because of that? No. Mm-hmm. It's probably telling me a better story now because it's taking the time to really give honest interaction between, yes. between these these people. as Because that's what would really happen. There's got to be something between these people before the whatever happens, I would assume, or they would never have gathered together in the first place. Um, I'll be curious to see how the ball keeps rolling to get the rest of the people that they, you know, that, like that, for instance, they're on the cover, how they all get together. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see how that happens. Mm-hmm. But if I look at this as a new reader, I'm looking at the cover. Okay. There's these people. Well, so where's the lady that was in the comic? Right. Where's, where's the fish guy? And where's, the, where's the flash? Yeah. Where's the flash, you know, mm-hmm. um, they aren't even seen at all. So, I don't know. You know, that would make me question yeah. what's going on as far as that goes. Yeah, yeah, it is a questionable choice, but but like you said just a second ago, I think it's a good one in the sense of telling a good story. Right. They're setting up a good story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they just chucked everybody together, it would it would feel artificial. There would have been there would yes, have been exactly. no, there would have been no point. They might as well have started present day, they already know each other and just have them fight Dark Side or whoever. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see your point. Yeah, from from a new reader's perspective, this is probably not the best way to sell the Justice League comic, let alone the you know the new Fifty Two universe. Um, but I think we both agree it's a pretty damn good story so far. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Let's see. There's one, two, three, four pages essentially of Vic Stone pre cyborg uh-huh. out of this book. What do you think of that interlude? Um, well, I was fine. It gives us uh, it gives us a background as to you know what this guy is mm-hmm. uh, before whatever happens happens to him to make him cyborg. Mm-hmm. Which, and of course, it sounds like it's going to involve his father because his father sure. supposedly studies the superhumans, uh, whatever it's, that means. Yeah, in some sense or another, right? They, they hint at that. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's interesting that we're getting to see his origin story, mm-hmm. where we're, we're really not seeing anybody else's origin story. Mm-hmm. Not, not that we, not that I think most anybody, going back to the, everybody knows these characters, some of these characters don't need, we don't need to be told their, their backstory. Really. Right. Everybody knows it in some sense, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and Cyborg's a, he, it's an unusual Mm, what do I want to say here? Um, choice, I guess, because one, you know, he's he's the youngest member on the team, um, uh-huh. at least of the, the main seven. Um, the fact that you know, we guess, we guess, yeah, you, yeah. Well, you, you don't you don't know how old Wonder Woman is, or that's true. I I, I, I am I am making a, a, a guess here, but sure. but you know, he's he's in high school. He's in high school. Right. Uh, I don't think Wonder Woman is is high school age, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Um, so he's in high school, at least at this point. So I assume during the course of these next four or five issues, something happens to him and he becomes cyborg. But mm-hmm. I, well, I guess what I don't know, and I've heard conflicting reports is, you know, was cyborg part of the new Titans, um, or the, or the Titans, I guess I should say the teen Titans or, or really? not. Cause I, I thought that at one point they said yes, but then I, I thought I heard another report saying that the, basically the new teen Titans, history that that, doesn't that exist. wolfman and perez did yeah it doesn't exist so i yeah. don't know no. but he, i don't believe i don't believe he's ever a teen titan because i get the impression that that the the new dc universe teen titans is the first teen titans really I, that's my impression well well obviously he couldn't have been part of the teen titans that that me and you read back in because starfire is a completely different character Mm-hmm. Going forward in the new DCU, mm-hmm. Da Troy doesn't ex- exist to the best of our knowledge right now mm-hmm. in the new DCU. Does does I'm not sure if Beast Boy exists in the new DCU. Oh yeah. I can't, I can't. So most of that Raven does she exist? Most of that the new Teen Titans yeah don't exist. That's true. 
So I don't know how they would have existed. Well, I was thinking – the reason I brought it up is because I was thinking, well, maybe you know, at this point um, he becomes cyborg, but he's too young, so they – you know, they take him under their wing, but he's not, he's not, you know, going off on missions like, like, uh, the rest of them would together, but maybe he gets associated with the Titans that, as we used to know them. Uh-huh. And then that leads up to the, the, the new version of the Titans, but maybe they just decided to chuck all that away. Like you said, like you described, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and he eventually, yeah, he becomes part of this or, or maybe he, maybe he's the liaison between the Justice League and, and the younger heroes because of his age. And he gets associated with with both sets of teams. I don't know, but it, it, it'd be interesting at least to find out. Um, I, I kind of thought you know, I, again, they're telling, they're setting up the character and, and telling a story about him in these mm-hmm. five pages. But I don't know. I thought that was that was just maybe too much on a character who doesn't, you know, is not appearing as the superhero that he becomes. Right. Right. Well, I wonder if to some degree that's how they're going to introduce some of these other characters. I, I think are. so. That aren't part of the because you've obviously you got these two guys seem to be three guys if Superman, Batman, and Green Lantern can figure out how to get along with each other. Moving forward with whatever their mystery is, and amongst that we're getting told, you know, other bits and pieces of where these other people are at, mm-hmm. to where at some point they're all going to fold in together. Yes. So I so if you look at the solicitations for Justice League number three, Wonder Woman's on the cover. So I assume the focus will be that for number three, but number two obviously will be the interaction between Batman and Superman. I'm sure they'll 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 throw in something about Wonder Woman to kind of introduce her in the story from our perspective. But then full blown, she'll be showing up in three. So maybe that's how they're going to do that in every issue is set up the you know a character to 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 be the focus coming up. Hmm. Yeah, it could be. Because we got Superman at the end of this one, and so we get the thing between him and Batman in number two, and then and then down through the line. But but at some point they got to stop introducing the characters and actually get on with the, the the conflict, the main conflict of the story as to why they became a team. Right. And and I sure hope they don't rush it. You know, they they get to issue five and they, they you know they all they've all come together, and then issue six is the resolution to the whole story. That, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how they do it, but. That would be. I would think that would would border on being a little too rushed and and too quick of a resolution. So. Well, but, yeah. But besides I mean, those, looking at the solicitations for Justice League number three, it shows it, it says that that's where where Wonder Woman joins the battle. So yeah. we're not going to see her until that issue. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So. Uh, okay. So. I think we both agree we're, I think we're at least somewhat excited to, to read number two. Well, yeah. I'm, well, I'm interested in seeing where it goes and how they, how they, how they tell this. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm also looking forward to them getting, to being a group and how getting on with interact. The show. Yeah. 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 I, I, and I think John's will do a good job at that in general. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. This, this is such a refreshing change to what uh, the, the title used to be. It's because editorial isn't going to mess with these two guys. <laughs> the, edi- editorial are creating. <laughs> right. They're title. the ones that are making the, they're the ones that are, well, they're not editors, but anyway, they're well, the ones that are yeah. making the bloody comic. Plus the fact they've told us there's no events for a year. So you've at least got a year of, of some extraneous outside force really messing with the comic. The only thing I can see mess with the comic is if in the first couple of months, Fan, re- fan reaction reacts poorly or something or good to some certain thing, and they decide they need to tweak it down the road from what they, their original thoughts are for the comic. They have to tweak it to make something work differently. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, just like they do with television or whatever, where they, you know, the fans are acting in a certain way or they're not selling on something of a certain point, oh, so yeah. that they panic and suddenly change whatever now see i and, and i won't mind that so much as long as they just don't do a, a total reversal right now if they make some tweaks along the way i expect that that's that's the nature of publishing the way right. that they do sure. I, I don't care about that as long as it's not too drastic a change or like i said a reversal to what they used to be right so I, i'm okay with that um i wanted to ask you so this comic justice league number one is 399 mm-hmm. um did you count how many pages of actual story we got no. 24. Okay. 
And then the rest of it, the the rest of it is the sketchbook thing, which is one, two, three, four, right. four pages. So uh -huh. 28 pages for 399 and four of those pages are just, here's some extra stuff. Right. I didn't like that. I this like comic's that. always going to be 399. Is it? Yep. Oh crap. And 40 pages. 40 pages? That's what it says on the Well, that's right. It does, but but I think they're counting all pages. I'm just counting actual okay. content. But it's going to be 399. This uh, is the one time. This this and you know all what? We're, Star... we're paying 399 for ads. Mhm. Mm that's not how it should be. <laughs> You're getting more pages than you get out of a 299 DC title. Mm, get four more pages. Mm, f four more pages for a dollar. Uh, more? Top talent. That's not right. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. We, I, I don't mind paying 399 if we actually get, you know, 30. Let's, I'll say uh, just, just to throw out a, a number, 32 pages of actual content. So, what comic books do you pay 399 for? Eric, that you get 30 plus pages of content out of. I will have to go find out. Good luck with that. <laughs> get back to all of us because we all want to know. I know. Because I, I, I want to know I'm what sure book that's that is true. too. Because so, I don't think I don't think there are very many. So what is Marvel? Marvel, it's random. What? Marvel's almost most of their stuff. They're starting to get more titles that are 2.99, but most sure. of the titles are 3.99, and the page count is random. Is it really? Yeah, it's not. It's not a. I don't think so. It's not consistent. It it changes. You know, it's whatever fits the story. If they need those couple extra pages or a few less pages, that's what it is. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Oh though. my god. I just while you were what? talking, I just I just counted the page count for uh, a three to nine issue of the Mighty Thor. Uh huh. Yeah. Guess how many pages I got out of that of, of content, not not ads or extra stuff they threw in. No idea. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty pages for three ninety. They were the ones. They were the ones that were going. Oh my gosh! How can you write a comic book for twenty pages? I know. Twenty pages. Fast. It has to be twenty two pages, and because it's twenty two pages, we have to charge it at three ninety nine price for it. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm pissed. I'm so almost... see, you're getting a damn good deal out of that. Justice League 399 for <laughs> 24 pages. Uh, but this comic book is always going to be 399. I mean, that's my well, understanding. I think it might be for the first arc, but I bet they bring it back down to 299. I don't know. Because I, I also, it's... my understanding is, is that um, All Star, um, All Star Westerns is going to be that way too, because it's got extra in it. It's got my understanding is, is like All Star Western has got, um, oh, what do I want to say? It's got. Um, like a twenty-page main story in it, and it's got some sort of a backup story in it. Well, that's okay. I, I don't. I wouldn't mind that. Because you're because you're paying for the extra mm -hmm. uh, extra trying, content. Yeah. I'm trying to find it right now where, where it's at, but uh, but but, does, but but don't you think that's kind of counterproductive for DC uh, for a title that probably isn't at, will be as successful as you know a mainstream superhero title to charge that dollar extra, even if you're getting a few more pages of content. It's it's no. already it, that I think that title. And and like the war titles are already uh, uh, on an uphill battle to get readers. Really? I think so. But Jonah Hex has gone seventy plus issues. Yeah, but how many how many how many uh, issues has it sold month to month? I, I don't know. It, it has I mean, to be enough, successful. Enough, enough it to, has for to them be to keep successful, it, yeah. or they would have pulled the plug on it. You're right, but. But but how much is successful? I that, I guess that I wish I wish we could know that. I don't kind know. Of stuff. Obviously, obviously, depending on what the title is, depends on you know what that litmus test is. I have no idea. I just it, it, I just think it would be they, they would be those titles would have perhaps a bit more success if it were priced lower. Mm. Well, maybe I'll see if I can um, poke um, Jimmy Pomolati <laughs> a little bit and see if I can get him to. Make a commitment to some sort of an answer. On it. I doubt I will because he's yeah. he's not crazy and he's not gonna no, no. you're not gonna make career suicide by making some comment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'd be curious. I mean, because obviously you know he pays attention to that stuff. He you know he's been in you know large different parts of the comic book industry. So I mean, you know he's got a different view of the whole thing, and it's a book that obviously he's attached to, and you know he was very proud of the Jonah Hex you know up until this point. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know that it's going to hurt it.
we, we pay that much money for um for Secret Six. I don't know how many pages it is though. Secret Six was was three ninety nine. Um, I thought it was two ninety nine. No, 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 no. It may be somewhere in between, but it's not. It's not two ninety nine. Really? I don't. Ha- I put mine away. I don't have it. <laughs> I, I'm looking for mine right now. Three ninety nine. Was that now? Was that just the final issue, or was it always? It wasn't always three ninety nine. It's always been three ninety nine. Really? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna check this on my on my stash my comics. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but I wanted to ask uh, that that sketchbook stuff. Did you did you find that interesting? Did you did you think it was worth having in there? Or? Oh, was I supposed to read that? Oh, you didn't. <laughs> So what do you think of having 24 pages for 399 dress? No, oh, I knew I was paying that for it anyway. I looked at the pictures. Did I actually read this stuff? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I looked at the pictures and went, "Oh, those well, are kind of interesting." What do you think of the the, the 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 sketch designs? Some of them were interesting. Did you notice that uh, the Green Lantern boots? The, they obviously didn't use that, but yeah, they used they used them on Supergirl Super, instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate those boots. Um. I don't know. I, I kind of like the Superman sketch. He looks really regal here. I don't know if that matches the character, Superman? but yeah, yeah, with the red stuff over the sh- you know going, with the cape kind of going over the shoulders like that. Oh, it does. Yeah, it and makes him look more regal, which I don't know if that's appropriately the image that they wanted to give. So maybe yeah. that's one of the reasons why they changed it. Yeah. What about the red gauntlets? That just adds to the regalness yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm glad they they changed that design though. I mean, it looks nice, but I'm glad they, they ultimately. Well, I, I actually, I tell you, I'm glad they simplified it because it was it was busier than what it needed to be. I think for. You, yeah. this is, here's a funny thing, Wonder Woman. I finally, you know, okay with the pants. Uh huh. Yeah. I have too. And they don't have. She doesn't wear pants. She does not wear pants. I kind of like the black pants with the stars being there, but yes. not actually being colored in. Yeah, I do, She's, I do too. She doesn't wear pants, though. She, this this whole argument uh, against her wearing pants, because that's not how Wonder Woman should look, I think is right. stupid. I think but, the idea of her wearing pants is great. In fact, I, my, I, my issue was never with her wearing pants. My issue was, is why the hell are we changing an iconic costume? Everybody knows Wonder Woman in a traditional costume, and that's why she's not wearing pants now. Because they knew going forward, when they were going to try and sell Wonder Woman, to some degree, she had to look like Wonder Woman. And if she's wearing pants and has things covering her arms all over the place, she does not look like Wonder Woman, the traditional Wonder Woman that everybody knows. They sell makeup. They have a whole line of makeup. But they can it, still they can still sell Woman. all that stuff. But part of selling the comic book and selling the Wonder Woman comic book and selling the Justice League comic book and anything else she's in is you have to be able to walk by the rack or walk by the display or walk by or look at, look online and immediately be able to go, that's Wonder Woman. And when she had pants and all the stuff all over her arms and whatnot, you didn't look at her and immediately go, that's Wonder Woman. But, but they didn't change it because of the, the potential sale, the, the, the image selling the character. I mean, they, they were going with the pants from the get-go. It was only after fan reaction that they, they decided to go and, and, and take the pants out. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think it was just cha- just just fan reaction that they pulled the pants. Well, then, but the, okay, so then why why did they go ahead with the pants? I mean, the, the the first images we saw of of the new Justice League had her in pants. They've they've since kind of taken that away. Sure. Um, and the first cover to the new Wonder Woman comic had her in pants, and they took those away. They they they, they would not have put her in pants in the first place if if. If ultimately the decision was, well, but we can't sell Wonder Woman if we don't put her or if we have her in pants, they would have thought about that before. But I, I think, think it had to do with – you're right. It had to do with the fan, out, uh, fan outcry, and I think part of that fan outcry is she doesn't look like Wonder Woman. That's, don't you think that's ridiculous though? That's a no. ridiculous argument? No, I don't think that's ridiculous at all. Really? Heck no. Why not? With my mom, who's – you know. Up there in years, collected Wonder Woman way back in the day. If I can walk up to her, show her a picture, and go, "Who is this, Mom?" and she goes, "I do not know," other than she's a comic book character. So, wait, you're saying you've done that? Yes. 
With oh heck yeah! When they came out with when they came out with the new Wonder Woman costume and the whole Odyssey thing, hell yeah. Okay, Odyssey. But what about what about the new design? Where she still has the pants and whatnot? I don't yeah. know. I know I did not take. Yeah, there were enough. There were enough clear pictures that didn't have Wonder Woman splashed all over it that I could take to somebody and go. Because, okay, you know, so, who is this? so I look at her. I, I look at Wonder Woman. I'm not looking at her waist down. I'm looking at the whole image. I'm not well, I, I, I know, but but I'm so I'm saying when when I when I when I tend to look at Wonder Woman, I tend to look at her from from the waist up, and she looks like Wonder Woman. Do you do you of really? Of course, she people? does. To you, <laughs> you're heavily steeped in the comic books. Come on. Uh, okay. I knew I'm gonna, who she was immediately too. I'm going to test this out. I'm going to do this too. So the next time we talk, hopefully okay. I'll, I'll I'm going to test this out with people who don't read comics too. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that um that that it's less recognizable. When, when all other marketing besides the push for the new 52 and the actual comic book itself, when all other marketing shows the traditional Wonder Woman, the two need to match up. Just like Hal Jordan's stuff now is all detailed and looks like real fire trucks and stuff. It has to match up to some degree for it to make business sense. And it is a business at the end of the day. It's all a business. You got, like I said, you got this entire makeup line. If you go and buy a, if you go and buy any standard superhero T-shirt that's got Wonder Woman, Supergirl, or you know Batgirl on it, it's all those traditional people. It's also one of the reasons why they moved Barbara Gordon back to being, back to being, Batgirl. Yeah. Because it's the iconic version of it. Whether we, whether we as fans agree with that, business wise, doesn't make, you know, they don't care. To no. some I totally, I totally agree with you. I, I understand that that viewpoint. Um, so, and and I'm saying is, is that if you have her all decked out in black pants, as opposed to being red, white, and blue, she's not gonna look. She doesn't. She isn't immediately recognizable to people who do not read comics as being Wonder Woman. Uh, I suppose. Whereas now you got her back. At least you know she's she, obviously her costume's different. She's got silver trim and that sort of stuff and whatnot. You know, and her and her bodice is segmented and whatnot. But it's still red, white, and blue. Mm-hmm. It's still the unitard looking thing, or how, I don't know what you want to call it. Mm-hmm. So, it, so despite the silly choker and armband I hate, <laughs> um, she Ditto. still looks. She still looks enough like Wonder Woman for you to go, "Oh, that's Wonder Woman." Whereas, yeah. if, whereas if she's all decked out in that black and red, which look kind of cool, that yes, what, that is. But that isn't what Wonder Woman looks like. Fine, fine. She should still have pants. I like the pants look much better. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my vote in there. Well, I understand that, but it's <laughs> also a, oh my God, over the whole TV show attempt and the pants that were there, oh, that oh, yes. are over. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of liked it with the pants and the, like I said, it had the stars, but the stars weren't colored. Yeah. That was pretty cool. There uh-huh. at that point, I thought I was like, wow, that's kind of sharp looking. Yeah. But I, well, like I said, I understand from a, from a, uh, business, um, Sure, but I still maintain I don't think they did it from from a purely business standpoint. I think they well, I guess I think I guess the fact that's still, still the same thing. Decide, you know what? This doesn't this doesn't match up with what we're wanting to do. Uh, I think it has more to do with how how much fan reaction there if, was. And they, if that they, was the case, they wouldn't be rebooting the damn DC no, universe I, in the first place. I, I think they're they're making concessions where they feel it's it's uh, wise to do so, and and, okay. and from a, from a business standpoint as well, they can okay. easily. Easily Photoshop out or however they do it, the pants off Wonder Woman. So that's an easy that's an easy an easy um, uh, fix to do to to appease the loudest criers out there. I didn't think people were crying that loud over the fact that she. We'd already had a year plus of her having pants. I think we were all past that as far I, as pants. I don't know because okay, so we had that yeah the whole Odyssey thing and people were like, what the hell. And and so we have that, and yeah, and I was like, well, why would you want to change the classic costume? But as I read Odyssey, I'm like, I really like this design. In fact, I like the Odyssey design better than what we have now. But then we we get through, the, yeah, we have a year plus of Odyssey, and then we get the new 52 and the new design, and people are like, what the hell? Why is she still wearing pants? That mm-hmm. was kind of the reaction I, I saw. Oh. Well, I, I thought it was more of, oh, yeah, she's still wearing pants. Well, Maybe we just read different. What's curious? Uh, what's What's curious is is if you look at the cover to number two, guess what? Uh, she's wearing pants. She's wearing pants. But they could still change that very easily. I know they can. I thought it was pretty funny at some little con or whatever that the writer was at, that Brian was at, 
he made the comment that, yeah, that her pants were retractable. <laughs> and of course, people went with it. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, I'm thinking, oh God. I'm thinking, wait a second. Why can't she have both? Both. Yeah. I hope they do that. Whatever, whatever strikes her fancy at the time. Yeah. I mean, I understand that for some people it needs to be a uniform or whatnot. I guess it depends on how they write the comic and why is she dressed up in a costume. You know, but mm-hmm. whatever. Okay, so we basically. Guess what? I really don't care whether she has pants or not. <laughs> I like one. Right. It doesn't. Do... Yeah. Cool. Ultimately, it I'm doesn't. So stoked! I just about this comic. This is one of the comic Wonder Woman comic. One of the comics I'm really excited about. Yeah. It's. It doesn't really matter in the end what uniform she's wearing. It matters yeah. how good the character is, right. and and what kind of good stories they can tell about her. Except for, I still think that visually. People are going to recognize her much quicker. I well, if, she's, if she's wearing shorts. I agree, I agree with you. I just I just yeah. prefer the other look. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what you, you know what we just did here. Mm. I had a whole post that I was going to put on my blog this week about this very topic. So now <laughs> I don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about as far as Justice League? About Justice League? Um, not not that I can think of. I. Talk about the stuff that I wanted to talk about. I know, I know. There's, I've read some people posting online, and 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 I've heard, like I said before, I've heard some people on some podcasts talk about how underwhelmed they were with this. Yep. This oh time. yeah, some of our own friends have said that. Well, you sure. Um, uh, I, I I wouldn't describe my reaction as underwhelmed. I, I it wasn't the, the you know like the 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 zip wow type of reactions like oh my right. god um but it was i'm excited to read this title and 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 really looking forward to where where it takes me what what kind of story it's going to tell me i don't know if excited is 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 how i would describe my reaction about what's what's next looking forward to reading what's next mm-hmm. i'm not like i'm not woohoo you know awesome this is you know this is great stuff but um I think it's going to be fun to read. Yeah, exactly. And and, and isn't that really the point? Oh, it's heck going yeah. to be fun to read. Heck yeah. That's what I want all my comics to be. You know what? So far, of the three of the new DC Universe that I've read, um, I've, I've enjoyed all three of them. I, on one level or another, I've mm-hmm. enjoyed all three of them. So. Then, they're, then they're doing their job so far. I, at the very we least, make, we, that's what it should be for us. Mm-hmm. So good. Good job, DC. So far. So far. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I said earlier, I think uh, in, in a couple weeks, we'll, we'll have finally gotten um, a good chunk of the new number ones. Yep. Uh, so then we can talk about our reactions to that in general. I don't know if, if we want to talk about books in particular or just kind of in general, but we'll, I guess we can, we can figure that out later. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to that discussion, Travis. So, all right. All right, so I think I think we're done. Uh, unless there's something else you want to bring up. Nope. All righty. So uh, go read Justice League number one. Definitely. You can you can skip Flashpoint if you haven't read it already. <laughs> yeah, you do That's not. My advice to, read, to you, the listeners. You do not need to read Flashpoint to move forward. <laughs> hey, wait a second. Is the hooded is the hood lady oh, in this thing? I forgot all about that. Yes, she is. Oh, she did, is. Did, yeah. Did you miss it? Yeah, I wasn't looking. I'll give you a hint. It's part of the the Vic Stone sequence. She's in the crowd somewhere, right? Because yeah. that's my understanding is, is the that's most. That's where she's at. Yeah, it's the the first page of the Vic Stone thing. She's in that inset, the small inset panel. Oh, yep. Yeah. Add her back. Do you think? What? Do you think that was always planned for her to be in all these? Or did they add that after the fact? Uh, I've read that she was added after the fact in some titles, but I don't wow. know which ones exactly and which ones had her in there from the get-go. Okay. guess it doesn't matter at this point. I'll complain about that later. Yeah. I'm sure as we go on, it'll be something that we'll we'll discuss. But yep. um, Okay. Well, that's it, I guess. Um, be sure to um, go to our blogs at uh, longboxreview.wordpress.com and oddfellowsthoughts.wordpress.com. I got that right, right? Yes, you did. Thank okay. you. I always want to add another word in there for some reason. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> you can always go to our blogs, leave us some feedback. Um, you can also email longboxreview at gmail.com. Uh, we're also on Twitter at longboxreview. And 
I'll let you say it, Travis. Um, <laughs> until I change it someday. The underscore gaunt underscore man. Thank you, Travis. I look forward to our next discussion. Yep. See you then. All right. Thanks for listening.